Howdy, howdy, folks. It's Diecast Buffet here again, and it's time for another Diecast review. Wave 9 is pretty much just dropped, at least locally for me. And it's time to review our second Wave 9 car. And this one's probably the best one. Actually, no, it is the best one of Wave 9. You probably know which one it is. Boom. Jeff Gordon's 1998 Pepsi Southern 500 winning Chevrolet Monte Carlo and by god this is one of the most beautiful looking paint schemes ever made in NASCAR history nothing nothing can really beat the Rainbow Warrior I mean just beautiful paint scheme beautiful so first thing I noticed with this is the retro packaging which I love so much I love the retro packaging just gives you just a, a sense of like a limited edition or you know a rare piece as you can see this is wave 9 and happens to be this one here so first off with the car itself you can see that it has um, confetti as this is considered a race win die cast beautiful beautiful so this is the car that you would see in victory lane and all that Jeff Gordon of course standing next to it making a whole lot of hooting and hollering as he won this car was ran September 6 1998 in Darlington South Carolina love the Southern 500 and I love Southern 500 cars so this is a Southern 500 winning car that I would probably never have if Lionel did not bring it to um, NASCAR Authentics and this is I think a beginning of a brand new era in diecast collecting as we've already seen them uh, I've seen a 124 scale of Darrell Waltrip's uh, Southern 500 car um, obviously we have Jeff Gordon's but we also I've also seen um, kind of like some stock imagery imagery of Martin Martin's uh, Southern 500 win, winning car so I think what's gonna happen is in the future we're gonna see more and more of these uh, throwbacks which I think is great because this is a gr not only a great business opportunity because it means they can make old Dale Jr. cars, they can make Dale Sr. cars, Jeff Gordon cars, whichever. They can do that and they can also go back in time to an era where die casts were not super popular and to be honest the quality was very poor in the 90s. The late 90s they had some good pieces but for the most part most of the cars that die cast made in the 90s were really really they just I don't know compared to today, today's standards they just did not look good a lot of the wheels were not realistic to the 164 scale I understand you know not every die cast brand can make their molds the same they have to, to differ a little bit but still I don't like seeing huge tires on one car and then seeing small tires on the other I believe they they need to be super consistent but yeah I think this is gonna be a new era in terms of die cast collecting because I see more of these coming in the future I see more of them because the fans love them it's just like Darlington cars you're getting a piece of history that's brand new and it's revamped with the latest in die cast molding technology so it's it, I mean it's not old but you're getting something that is based off something that's old and you're getting it at a very great price and quality you know I think it's a great idea and I I hope I hope they make a bunch of these because I can just start naming off a whole bunch of what I would love to see. I think probably the first one I would love to see is um, maybe Mark Martin's 2002 Coke 600 win. Maybe Ward Burton's 2002 Daytona 500 win like race winning die cast, you know, with the confetti, you know, tire marks whatever it may be. Could you imagine if they did a Kurt Busch in tied uh, Ricky Craven's Tide Car, Darlington set, raced version. Like, could you imagine that? Like, it, like let's say they had a wave, and then like they had Kurt Busch's um, Darlington car from 2003. Then they had um, Ricky Craven's 2003 Darlington car. I mean, could you imagine that? Like, everyone would be like, "Oh my God, I have to have this piece in this piece." Not coming together. They're just in the same wave. But they're, you know, separate packaging. So you have people looking online, making, 
deals trying to get these cars. Let me tell you, everyone would be after those cars, man. I'm telling you, it, it, it is a new opportunity for collectors to get something that doesn't have to be custom made, but it's just something cool. I mean, if you're like, there's a lot of people who are, you know, f fans of drivers who don't race anymore. I think Rusty Wallace is a great example. You know, he's not as popular as Dale Sr., but there's still a lot of cool-looking Rusty Wallace cars that were never made into, you know, the really popular molds back in the 90s. They just were more of a cheaper brands and stuff. So I think Lionel has a great opportunity, but of course the, the biggest issue with it is the branding, the logos, the sponsors. I mean, Jeff Gordon, you know, back then, you know, had entirely different sponsors than he knew. Like right now, Quaker State, let's see if we can get this to zoom in. Quaker State is sponsoring uh, Paul Menard's car, which is affiliated with Penske. Pen uh, Quaker State and Pennzoil are pretty much, you know, hand in hand. Well, you have that, but nowadays, Hendrick is sponsored by Valvoline. So that's what I'm getting at is that there's a lot of different, you know, sponsor issues. And that has to be all worked through. It's just like a NASCAR video game. To put a paint scheme in the game, they have to go get all these licensings. Like when they make a racetrack in-game, the billboards, they have to go and get every single sponsor's approval to put that in the game. It's ridiculous the amount of work. And I think if they could streamline that process, they'd be great. And I've, when I heard with the Mark Martin one, is that Mark Martin actually is going to help them make that. I, that's what I was hearing. I don't know if that's true or not. But that's enough of me rambling. Um, let's go ahead and get this special throwback retro race winning diecast out of the package. Alright, it is out of the package, brand new, and my god, I am just blown away of how good this car is. Okay, I seen uh, Race Day 2011 reviewing this car in the uh, Gold Series. Big shout out to him. But, um,. He's really nice, dude. But he said when he was reviewing this car, he said it felt just like a winter circle or like an old action car, or one, you know, one of those. And I'm going to be dead honest, it does. The car, it, it, it weighs more than, like, this one has more weight than this one, which I really like. But yeah, this one definitely, it, it's, got, it's got that die cast feel to it absolutely has that beautiful beautiful paint scheme and the blue on this is I mean, look at that, that nice let's see if i can get a good zoom on it just look at that nice glitter just beautiful die cast man just beautiful the bright neon orange it just it does not get better than this and ironically enough this is my favorite model of NAS of a NASCAR. This is my favorite model of it, of a NASCAR stock car. The nineteen ninety eight models I I believe are the true stock cars. They just they're beautiful. I love I just love the look of them so much. This one just it blows me away how good of a job they did on designing this thing. But I don't know about you, but I do see a little bit of a manufacturer issue so the car is not all the way in so car is supposed to look something like this right well once you let go it's in the the back of the car you can see it's kind of slanted like right there let's see let's see if you can kind of get a view on this the back of the car is not all the way in so it does leave a little bit of room for the exhaust and the side to hang so unfortunate, it does have a slight manufacturer defect. I'm not really sure what they're doing on this little corner panel, though. I don't know if that's supposed to be a like a small tear or something. I don't know. I mean, I understand. You know, they got to do what they can't. They got to do. It's much cheaper to just put a decal on it than actually make a mold, a completely separate mold with a um, a dent in it. So I completely understand that. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could do something with it, but 
God, this car is beautiful, man. It's just beautiful. The tires look a little different, though. I'm not... Let's see. Let's try, let's try to compare them. So, this is a 2018 um, car... It looks like they're the same style tires, just a bigger lettering on it, which is fine with me. When I first looked at it, I was looking at the wheels, and I was like, they look a little different. They always look like they're kind of balloon tires, like the tires look fatter. But no, it's just actually a uh, bigger lettering. But no, this this car is beautiful, man. Like It's so good looking at this little defect. It, it, it's, you know, it's it's worth it. And plus, if I really wanted to fix it, I could just fix it. I mean, I've stripped die cast before, so I could fix that problem if I really wanted to. But honestly, I don't want to take this one apart. I'll just leave it as it is. Now, another thing that I don't know exactly if this is supposed to be like this, but the spoiler in the roof, are they supposed to be this shade? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I haven't seen a... Uh, a photo or anything that's showing these are different, but I'm I think that's accurate. I think that is. I don't think Lionel would make that big of a mistake, but who knows? <laughs> anyway, though, this car is absolutely beautiful. I mean, just just look at that. If that does not give you shades of Dale Earnhardt in night late 1990s, just look. I mean, that is just beautiful, man. And when it be in Jeff Gordon, you know, he's already retired. But, I mean, when this car was raced, this, this is, what, his fourth or fifth year, fourth year in the Cup Series, then the Winston Cup. So, I mean, this car is just fantastic, dude. As far as decal placement, I'm going to try to see if I can find any defects. But, honestly, I haven't really seen any, to be honest. Like, this looks pretty good. The the confetti placement looks pretty good too. I mean, they didn't get any on the windshield, but I'm I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. I think they did a beautiful job with this car. I really do. The paintwork is really nice. It's just a slight chassis issue, which I completely understand as this is a special chassis. I mean, they might only use this chassis one time. So, I mean, it's not like they're remaking a bunch of them. What I would love to see, though, is someone take a 1998 um, action uh, chassis, like, you know, the actual 1998 ones, not 99 or 97, actual 1998 ones, compare it to it and see how it looks, you know, how it looks and feels. Do they use the same mold. I imagine Lionel has rights to all the molds, I think. I think they have the rights to all the old molds. But I would love to see that. Man, this car is just... Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful die cast. And if you're a Gordon fan, there, if you do not want this car and you are a Jeff Gordon fan, what is wrong with you? Like, seriously, what is wrong with you if you do not want this car? If you're a NASCAR fan and you don't want this one, what is wrong with you? Because you obviously cheer for some... I don't know who you cheer for, but you're certainly not a true NASCAR fan. Whether you love Jeff Gordon or hate him, you have to appreciate a die cast this beautiful. It is one of the best ones, if not the best one, NASCAR Authentics has released this year. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Like, if this this little thing was fixed like this, this thing's almost flawless. Almost flawless. The only thing else I am noticing on this die cast is that slight little bit of orange um, underneath that little uh, tear or damage mark. That's it. Even has NASCAR's, what is it, 50th anniversary logo right there my goodness this car is so good looking if I can get the camera to you know zoom that'd be that'd be kind of cool let's see but yeah it's really hard to read but I'm seeing a NASCAR um, 50th logo it's 
really cool. It is really cool. And what this reminds me of is um, the old NASCAR games. This what it really reminds me of. Like, um, oh, what game was it? Was it NASCAR 98? I don't know. It was uh, one of the NASCAR, maybe it was NASCAR 99. It, I don't know. It was one on the Nintendo 64. And they had, you know, they had a NASCAR game for it. And it, it was pretty cool. It was really cool. You can, you know, actually race as the top cup drivers, you know, it was 3D. And at the time, I mean, it was really good graphics. It was super cool. I remember playing that, you know, you have your Jeff Gordon, you got your Dale Earnhardt, you got all those guys. But this this car is amazing. I think the next one they should do, if they haven't done already, if if I think they should do his 98, 94 uh, Brickyard 400 or do his, um, one of his Daytona 500 wins. I think that'd be really cool. One of his 90s Daytona 500 wins, I think that'd be really cool. Because what I'm noticing is they're doing a Southern 500 line. They're doing a bunch of old Southern 500 diecast. Well, I think they should also do some Daytona 500 ones. So if they release two um, quote-unquote throwback diecast, release one at the start of the season or a little bit after it, a Daytona 500 winning one, and then when it comes to Darlington weekend in the uh, you know fall, why not release a Darlington one? I think that'd be really cool. And it would give us two throwback diecasts to uh, look forward to every year. It's not oversaturating the market. It's giving the viewer something to enjoy. And I think that'd be really cool. I know this review is going on a whole lot longer than expected. But this is a car that I cannot I cannot say enough about. It's so beautiful. This little, this little, this little chassis issue. It was just well, like that. This car would be flawless, bro. It would be flawless. This is beautiful. Just beautiful. I love it so much. And I'm super happy I found it. You know, I seen it in, you know, your normal gold series boxes, but I didn't really expect them to put it in the authentics line. Because I I prefer authentics over, you know, the gold series stuff. But absolutely a stunning die cast. Stunning die cast. And I can't end the video without looking at this card, folks. As you can see, it says race version. Jeff Gordon, Darlington Raceway, Pepsi, Southern 500 winner. Darlington, South Carolina, September 6, 1998. With Jeff Gordon right there. The Chad he is. As you can see, time of race. This is what I love is the little statistics. 3 hours, 36 minutes, and 21 seconds. I remember uh, a few years ago. Uh, what was it? The 2015 Southern 500. It lasted longer than the Coca-Cola 600 that year. So I think it was like a five or six hour race. It was ridiculous, man. Start He started fifth. Uh, total laps, 367. What? Two cautions? So they had two cautions in the Southern 500. Yeah, they had like 12 or 13 in the 2015 one. Uh, 12 lead changes. Laps led by winner 64, so that's a pretty good amount. Margin of victory 3.6, 31 seconds. Driver career wins. Oh, that is so cool. This is probably my favorite statistic. It shows how many wins this guy um, had when he was um, when he won this. This dude what started 19 what 93, 94. 39th NASCAR Winston. Winston. Can you believe it? They actually put Winston on this. Cup Series win. That, I love that. That is awesome work by Lionel coming up with this little card deal. I love this. Absolutely love this. This is my first race win or raced win or raced version car. And I got to admit, I love this. This is a really cool piece. <laughs> Guys. You got to get this die cast, man. Get it. Find it. This is the car to get. I think of the year. I think this is the car to get. It's beautiful. If you love Jeff Gordon, if you love, you know, Dale Earnhardt, you love any... If you're just a NASCAR fan, man, get this car. It is so beautiful, and it won't let you down. It feels like a legit um, action or winter circle car. Like, 
the, the, the car, it feels heavier, but not like Hot Wheels um, 164 heavy. Like the, some of the NASCARs are super heavy because the bottom's metal. No, this, it, it's got the feel to it. This video's gone on long enough, but I had to make sure I properly, properly reviewed this stunning diecast. If you liked the video, please leave a like below. And if you want to see more content from Diecast Buffet, reviews, builds, custom stop motions, all that great stuff, please subscribe to Diecast Buffet. We're a small but growing YouTube channel. We need all the help we can get. Anywho, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have a great one. And Diecast Buffet, signing off.